joined here at the Dangerous Darren Show on Adobe Radio and iHeartMedia as well on a rare video portion of the show featuring my friend, guitar player for the band Offspring Noodles. I've known Noodles a long time. Offspring.com for information on them or go to their Instagram at Offspring. And if you want to follow Noodles on Instagram, it's a little tricky. G, the G Nuds. <laughs> it's it's new like a new like the animal the african the uh, the kind noodle. of water buffalo or whatever so it's nudes yeah the g n u d z the, <laughs> the g is silent but yeah everyone calls me like smelly calls me g nuds uh smelly from no effects yeah uh, so yeah, everyone knows me a little little differently but it's it's nudes kind of a take off on that nobody had that name he calls so. you g nuds g nuds yeah <laughs> <laughs> well noodles thanks for coming on the show i do appreciate it it's been a long My pleasure time. man yeah good to see you good to talk with you again so i mean the obvious question the elephant in the room is covid came like a storm and took our right. in our, our industry especially i uh, hit it really 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 hard with record labels shutting down booking agencies shutting down tours shutting down i guess you guys were in south america when the whole thing happy we were what have you been doing i know you recorded the record uh let the bad times roll and we'll talk about that a little bit later but what has been keeping you besides the band and writing and recording what what does covid year off been look, look like for you and your family i started drinking really heavily for a while me too uh yeah true story uh, i slowed down and, since uh, then yeah me too i actually quit for 150 days and then last week we did a beer tasting thing and I've been mostly off, but uh, mostly uh, off the sauce. Uh, but but yeah, I quit for 150 days. Give your it's important to give your liver a break. Your liver is an amazing organ, and mm -hmm. up up until you actually get cirrhosis, it can heal itself. So give yourself good, long, healthy breaks. And um, but yeah, we were. With, uh, I guess that's it. Family stuff. Um, trying to get out and enjoy the outdoors like everybody else is right now, which I think is. One of the uh, best things about the pandemic is people are just outdoors all the time. I live in, a, in down by the beach here in Huntington and uh, you know, the, the boardwalks and everything are just crowded with people on bikes and, and people just out enjoying the outdoors. I think that's great. Yeah, we were pretty lucky. The Californiaites were pretty lucky living in California and they, you, know, you got to stay inside. You got to quarantine. You got to avoid this, avoid that, blah, blah, blah. That's all fine and dandy, but the beach is wide open and so are the hiking trails and so are the biking trails yeah. and so are the, the beautiful nature that is California. So I, th I, can, I think we're pretty lucky in, in that sense. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, my wife and I did a lot of that even before the pandemic hit and boy, the, the hiking trails are more crowded than ever. You know, it's, I think people just, they're, they're, they're stuck. They can't gather. So they're all outdoors just kind of taking care of themselves, which I think, I think is a good thing. Trying to get rid of the COVID-5. Speaking of COVID, the COVID-5, I, I, I'm more like COVID-15. What, what are you at? Uh, I, I've actually, that's one thing I've, I've been watching what I eat and I'm down about 15 pounds. I, I went, well, I was up probably at least that. So I'm still working on losing a, a few. But. Well, by the rules of algebra, that'd be the COVID minus 15. Yeah, there you go. Well, I was I think it was the plus 15. I think we're we're back to neutral. Now I want to get down below where where I was even then. So, I'm yeah. sure I put on probably 10 pounds over that with all the drinking and eating and you know my wife got into making the bread for a little while like like a lot of other people did. So you, she was making the bread, you were drinking it. I was I was drinking bread and <laughs> and, and and yeah, slopping bread and beer and Oh my god. Slopping it back, yeah. Is that a thing people do yeah. that? The, the no, beer and the bread. I, I made that up. I, I'm, I'm, I made it up. I'm, I'm talking out my ass now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> in Huntington Beach, you mentioned, how far are you from Randy Bradbury? I, I was at his house recently, and he lives in a nice All right. There. Yeah, we're not that far. He's more on the other side of the pier. I'm actually uh, in, a, in, a, in a part of Huntington called Sunset Beach. Uh, it used to be unincorporated county, but Huntington Beach uh, took us on about, uh, I got about eight years ago, I think now, between five and eight years probably. Um, so we're like the kind of little bastard stepchild of Huntington Beach, but uh, it, it's a neat little area here. Um, we got the harbor on one side of PCH, and then us on this side of PCH. Okay, yeah, he's got a uh, he's got a great little studio in his backyard. He keeps him busy for video and recording, and you know the punk rock karaoke videos we've been doing every week. Sure, yeah, yeah, it's been great. Yeah, getting, was, get, getting bass from him has been pretty easy. That was one of the things I got to do was sit in with you guys uh, when you guys did the kind of live streaming thing a, a few months ago it was towards the end of the year last year i got to sit in with you guys on yeah, that the that was fun. The rock uh video thing exactly yeah that was yeah 
That was a five. It was, fun. was totally it was a little fun. weird being around people because that was like the heat of it. Everyone's like, "What do we do?" Should I know. We... Yeah, yeah. I thought it was pretty good. We all had. Everyone was wearing the masks, you know, when we weren't on stage singing or playing. And you know, I thought it was that was pretty cool, pretty well done. Now I mentioned that you, the the band Offspring, you were in South America, I believe, Chile, when it all went down, and you had to scramble and get on a plane and go home. What was that like? Was it uh, seamless, or was it filled with anxiety and headaches and? He, yeah, no, it was, it was pretty, there. yeah, it was stressful, you know, and, uh, you know, the, well, part of the problem was we, we were, the, the show in Chile was a makeup show. Um, we had, we were scheduled to play there months earlier as part of a tour that we actually went down and did, but the Chilean show got canceled because of the, there was a lot of civil unrest because they raised the transportation prices and, and so people are just being hurt, you know, it's you know, not making a whole lot as it is and then they up the bus prices and train prices and stuff and so you know it was people are paying more to you know go to work you know not making as much and and you know students and stuff struggling so there was a lot of uh, civil unrest there and riots and we just couldn't couldn't come and do the show um kids probably wouldn't, wouldn't be able to the crowd kids it's not just kids anymore. Let's face it. Uh, the, the, the fans crowd couldn't have actually probably yeah the fans they couldn't have come to the show because the transportation was shut down and and uh, you know the you know, riots in the street and stuff. So this was a makeup show for that. And so we 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 flew originally to Buenos Aires and then that show got canceled. Uh, and you know nothing was really shut down, but they shut that one down the, the night like the day of. So we got on a plane, flew to Chile. That show happened, and then the next night got canceled, and everything else after that. I think we were scheduled to go to Brazil and maybe maybe one other country. And uh, you know, out of seven shows, the only one that happened was the makeup show in Chile, and, uh, and all the other shows, shows got canceled. Said, right? Two. There was supposed to be seven shows altogether, and we oh, only did the Chile. one. The Chile. It was two shows in Chile, or just one? Yeah, it was the yeah, it was the makeup show, the big rock show. Pennywise was supposed to be there with us and they knew that these shows were going to, they were coming down to do like five of the shows, five out of the seven. Wow. And I think they knew that things were going to get shut down. And Randy Bradbury, like day of show, uh, tweeted out, a lot of people are going to learn the term force majeure. Oh yeah. And I'm like, Act of force God. majeure. Yeah. Force majeure. What does that mean? And so I looked it up and went, Oh, they're not coming. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're not exactly. getting on the plane. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, they were right not to, uh, you know, it was, it was an expensive uh, seven show tour for us, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, I was going to say, if you didn't play, it would almost be funny, like a future joke. You could go down there eventually and play the show. And then when the crowd's like, finally, the offspring are here. It happened. It took so long. You could hit the opening note and go, we are the offspring. Show's canceled. And, and joke and pretend to walk off stage and come back. And go, We're kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe when, the, maybe when we come down for, to redo the acoustic show, the acoustic set. Yeah, we'll do that. It doesn't that quite would, I mean, acoustically it, with, a, with an open. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Yeah. <laughs> Let it ring out for, I don't know, two uh, seconds. Let's try it. I'm going to see how it sounds. Show's canceled! That's good. There work. you go. Right. It strangely yeah. works. <laughs> You know, it's really out of tune. But uh, I wanted to talk about the record, Let the Bad Times Roll. And it makes total sense why you called the record Let the Bad Times Roll. And um, April 16th, Concord Records, it comes out. Um, did this come about from songs that you already had? I know Let the Bad Times Roll was inspired by obvious, obvious things in the world. But right, uh, right. were there other songs on the record that you already had in the can or because you had a lot of time off and, and Dexter and everyone else had a lot of time off, you were able to knock around some ideas that you had in the past or did you start fresh with songwriting? Uh, actually, well, we've been working on this record for about nine years, um, but, but really most of it came together in the last two or three years. Um, wow. You know, and, and up until, and we, we were pretty much done when the pandemic hit. Um, we'd already started talking to Concord, the record label, because we didn't have a label. At the time, we started talking to them, you know, playing for them a couple of songs, and they were they were on board, even though we didn't really have the the deal done yet. Um, but then the pandemic hit, and we're like, man, are we going to put out a record in the middle of a pandemic? That seems like a bad idea when you can't go out and tour on it and stuff. So we we took another look at the record and just kind of tightened up some things, changed a few things here and there, and I think we it did make the record better as a whole. But, it, you know, we're, we're also like, we're in the studio and like, well, let's do a Christmas song today. Okay. <laughs> well, let's do a cover of the, 
hear Kitty Kitty from that that Tiger King, you know, documentary that's that's all the rage right now. So we did that, and eventually we're like, this record's done. We got to get it. We got to get it out, you know. But some of the songs, to answer your question, some of the songs, musically at least, kind of go back a ways, and then, but most of it's probably written in the last couple of years, and definitely reflecting, you know, the the time we're living in for sure. Well, I, I hope not. And what I mean by I hope not, there's one song on the record called We Don't Have Sex Anymore. Oh, right. Yeah. And I got to ask, is that <laughs> just a joke? or? I mean, well, I think it's, it's <laughs> certainly a tongue in cheek. It's a, well, Dexter and I personally don't have never had sex with each other. So, well, there's still time. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so something new to look forward to. No, we, uh, you know, if you're hanging out with Fat Mike, who knows it could happen real quick. Yeah, that's true. I'm, a, we, you know, if we end up in the dungeon together, um, the, uh, anyone who's been in a relationship that's lasted longer than a couple of weeks knows what it's like when the passion starts to fade, you know, in, in a relationship, uh, y- you know, so it's, it's something that I think everybody's gonna, everybody's gonna, you know, recognize that, you know, as, as part of, of a long-term relationship, you know, I've been married, uh, Gosh, oh, I better know this. <laughs> twenty-three oh, years. I've been know. married twenty-three years, and um, yeah, just in February we celebrated twenty-three years. And uh, you know, the, the passion waxes and wanes, and gets hot, and heavy, and then it, you know, you know, mellows out and chills out for a while. And yeah. that's just that's just a long-term relationship. You know, I think Every, everybody goes through it. I think you're right, and people can relate to that. That have been in a relationship for five, six, twenty, like your year, twenty-three. Two, I think people two days, relate. three days. Yeah, uh, the first know. month to the first year is like passionate, and you can't keep your hands off each other. But then, as sure. time schedules change, and you got to work, and I got to work, and I got to go here, and you got to go there, and it's hard to get together and be passionate. But I meet people from time to time in certain social settings, and they're like, "Oh, we've been married for seven years, and we have sex seven times a week." Or I'm like, "No, you don't." Yeah, right. it's like not, guy, not every week. It's like the guy who claims he never week. he never masturbates. I never masturbate, right. liar. Right. Yeah, you're fucking yeah. lying. You're lying right to my face. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah, so I can relate to that. And then Bob Rock was that a uh, a decision you made as a band, or did Bob come to you and say, "Hey, what are you guys up to? Let me hear some songs." Uh, we we've been working with Bob pretty much. You know, when we finish a record, we don't say, "Okay, thanks, Bob." You know, see you later. We, you know. It's always been like, okay, well, you know, we'll get through this cycle and then we'll take a look again, you know, the next cycle. Bob's great. And, and we have no, you know, no plans to, to stop working with him. Uh, yeah, right. he's, he's just been great. You know, so we've been, it seems like it's just been a seamless, oh God, it's been like 12 years now or more that we've been working with Bob. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, he'll fly in for a little bit. He doesn't, he doesn't live in Southern California. So he'll fly in, we put him up Hawaii, to the beach right? and he, in Hawaii. And then he, he spends a lot of time in Vancouver as well. Um, he's got family and then, and then he does a lot of work up there. I think, he's I think Canadian. the, where, yeah, right? he's, yeah. The Paola. he's Canadian. Yeah. yeah. Yep. The Paola's came from the Paola's. Um, and he started really, uh, he had, he, he was working at a, um, a studio. He started engineering and, and working in Vancouver up there. And so he was kind of in the Vancouver punk scene. He worked with a lot of the, a lot of the bands from back in the day. I know the, the Canadian subhumans was one of the big ones that he worked with and DOA. Yeah, and the Paolas. I don't know if he worked with DOA. I know he knows those guys. I don't know if he did any recording with them. Mm. I, don't, I don't remember. He he tells all kinds of great stories. Um, you know, but but with the Paolas, I think they probably played with DOA. You know, and toured. They toured with a lot of those bands and, and cross paths all the time with punk bands because um, the Paolas were new wave. Right when people didn't know what to really do with that. You know, <laughs> so, I have a stranger. It was a big hit, I believe. Exactly. Yeah. Great song. Yeah. It is a great song. We actually got to do it once. Dexter and I did it with Bob um, and Alice's, Alice Cooper's backing band at a, a benefit in um, on, yeah, on Maui, actually. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, great song. So you looking at your calendar of shows, looks like you got some stuff planned for Europe uh, starting in the beginning of June. Are you pretty confident? You and management and, and artists and label and, and, and booking agent are pretty confident. Promoters, everyone's pretty confident that's going to stay solid. I, I don't know how confident we are. You know, we're confident that eventually we will get this. I think we're more confident later on in the year, like in the fall, mm. the fall, the beginning of winter. I know we're very confident about some of those dates. Uh, I don't know about the early dates. You know, if you know, we, we got to see what the vaccines do. I know Europe right now is going through a third lockdown. Um, and so, and they're usually like three or four weeks ahead of the States. So we could see another, you know, spike and another lockdown here in the U.S. 
I think our vaccinations might be a little bit ahead of theirs. That could change things here. But in, in any case, until we stop the spread and it's safe to get gather people together, there will be no shows. I mean, it's just nobody's gonna. N- nobody in this band wants to risk, you know, people, you know. And, and it's not just the people that come to our shows, and it's not even just the grandparents or aunts and uncles of those people. It's just people in their community. You never know who you're going to spread that disease to. It could be you can spread it to two or three people before somebody actually ends up in the hospital for weeks and or dies. Um, I know. I don't have you. Have you? Do you know anyone who's passed or been hospitalized? My yet? sister had it twice, but she works for the CDC, so it makes sense. She, okay. She's, yeah. she's she's on the front lines with with people hospitalized because of it. No, uh, not okay. See, I know I know two people that, that have passed away. Uh, oh, my ex's was mother. Gone. Art Alex Akis from Everclear was hospitalized really bad with it. Oh, really? Jeez, I didn't know that. In the clear. Oh, man. Yeah. All right. Well, wishing him a speedy recovery. Yeah. Um, I know two people that I'm fairly close to that, that were hospitalized for weeks um, and two people that passed away. One, I didn't know that well. I was a fishing, fishing buddy and I would run in, into him at the local watering hole. Um, we've been on a couple of fishing trips together. And then my ex's mom, my daughter's uh, grandmother, uh, passed away from it. And so... Oh. You know, this has some very real world consequences to me, you know, I mean, you know, I've seen it. I don't, I think a lot of people, they, to them, they haven't seen it, ha- you know, really reach, you know, touch them, you know, not in, not in any, any ways that are serious. Everyone's saying it's like the flu. I've been on this planet for a long time and I don't know anybody who died of the flu. Jim Henson died of the flu, the Muppets guy. Mm-hmm. That's, and I, and I remember like he died of the flu, who dies of the flu, you know? Uh, so I don't, People are calling this it's the never, flu, I think. It's never the yeah. flu or it's never um, cancer. It's never COVID that kills you. It's complications from it. Like COVID comes in, flu comes in, cancer comes in, and all of a sudden something goes out and you die. Right. So um, I still, you know, I mean, I, the people that I know that have, that have died, the flu wasn't even listed as part of the reason. Yeah. You know, I, I know people that get the flu and they're in bed for a day, you know, or two days and, or not yeah. all, walking around. Yeah, yeah. You know, totally. Some people don't. Yeah. So you live in Huntington Beach, and I understand that Huntington Beach, Orange County, California, versus L.A. County, California, there's two different sides on the political uh, spectrum. And I, I'm not asking you what side you fall on, but are you seeing uh, more of a lack, lackadaisical sense of this is fine, it's no big deal, I'm not affected by it down there the, than when you spend time in, like, L.A. proper? Uh, well, here in Huntington Beach, there's been a big anti-mask and anti-shutdown movement, a bunch of, you know, pro, and it always turns into a Trump rally and it's happened on Main Street, you know, in downtown and, 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 uh, yeah, I just, it kind of blows me away the, really the, the thoughtlessness of it. And, and I think that's the, the best way to put it because I don't think they're really looking at both sides of this, you know, and like I said, I don't think it's affected them. I don't think. Until they have somebody in their, you know, in close proximity to them, a relative, a friend who who suffered the way I, some of the people I know have, I don't think they, I don't think they take it seriously, you know. And it's and it's a serious, it is a serious disease. It's not to be messed with. And I think wearing a mask at the very least shouldn't be an issue, you know. I wear it all the time, so yeah, I got one in my back pocket all the time, just to just to have. Yeah, it's not a uh, mm. it's not it's not a hard thing to do. It's a very simple thing to do. No one's saying it's not annoying. It's super annoying. It's you go into especially a- if you wear glasses like you and me. You know, come on, all the people that don't wear glasses complaining about it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you know, I can't see when I'm wearing one. You know, it fogs up your glasses and yeah. then you can't see. It. Yeah, it's there it's it really annoying. I hate doing it. I really wish we didn't have to do it, but it's so simple to do it in in public yeah. settings like grocery stores and drug stores or you know when you're on an airplane. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, that's the only time we're asking you to wear it. You know, not when you're right. in your home alone with your family or when you're in your car or, or with your family or alone. It's just <laughs> your social settings because you don't know that you might be carrying it. And the people that on these videos that are like, I don't have it. Like, well, you don't know that. It's yeah, you don't know it yet. Exactly. Yeah. Pure, pure yeah. ignorance in its purest form to think that you're just immune or above it. Uh, yeah. And I think that lives in certain areas other than, than others. And uh, yeah. it sucks that you're surrounded by, by it in Huntington. <laughs> well, Huntington Beach, and, and Huntington Beach is known for these rallies. And also there was two guys who did this great video where they were offering free masks. Oh, they go to the they're just, kind of, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's it went viral. 
and people are getting mad. Yeah, you know, you're sheep. Yeah, you're sheep. Yeah, okay, they're the sheep. You know, they're gonna. Yeah, and they were very kind and you know nice, just generous offering, and they they got so much abuse for it. It's yes, and that's yes. and that's not everybody in Huntington Beach. I mean, there's some really thoughtful, you know, decent, honest people in Huntington Beach, but you get a lot of you got a lot of Karens, you know, and and what's the and what's the I want to say Kevin is the Kevin the guy one. version of a Karen, right? Yeah. Ken's another one. Ken, yeah. Ken. Yeah. yeah, Kevin, because that's that was my birth name is Kevin, and you know, everyone calls me Noodles, but but I'm a Kevin, so I can say Kevin jokes and Karen jokes. <laughs> You're immune yeah. to Kevin jokes. Yeah, so well, I want to talk, yeah. talk a little bit about um, Mikey and his uke. My friend Mikey Hodden from Toronto started a quarantine video a year ago. He just had. I owe I owe him a video actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm behind on a video. I what think are you doing? Send him. I'll do it today. Uh, Bad reputation. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. backup vocals yeah. on that. Adrian Young's playing. Oh, okay. uh, it's going to be yeah. really cool. But uh, Mikey did this thing as a joke just to kill some time and did a video every day with a ukulele. And then it transformed into what it is now. And it's all these great guys and girls from these different yeah. bands coming together doing these. Uh, it could be a ska song. It could be a punk rock song. It could be a pop song. It's really mostly punk for the most part, but it's gotten wildly successful and, and blown up to the point where, you know, people are calling him now and being like, Hey, I want to be on one of your videos. How do I get on one of your videos? Rad, good for him. I think I'm one of my favorites was holiday road. The the song from, uh, was it holiday holiday road or not holiday road? It's the one from, um, uh, the Bill Murray movie, the golf movie. It wasn't holiday road. Holiday oh, road. Holiday is, road. Ah. Yeah. Was it that one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I right, saw so him wait. Yeah. The, uh, vacation. Yeah. 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 Vacation. Okay, I thought he also did the one from what is the um, what is the Rodney Dangerfield Bill Murray Caddyshack. movie about golf? Caddyshack. It's Caddyshack. Uh, what was it? All right, don't don't really worry about me. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Did he do that one, no, or am no. I getting my movies mixed up? All right, it was the vacation. Well, then he should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting them all mixed yeah, up. Holiday has got that great chorus. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. yeah these videos are so much fun to put together. They're a little difficult because some people get back to Mikey. And me, because I've been helping him, and I know you've been helping him with some contacts. Some people get back to him like same day, video, audio, perfectly sounding, mixed, ready to go. Other times he has to call and call and and then yeah. wait. You don't have a bug, and then you wait. And then you Sorry, call. Mikey. <laughs> you just putting you're putting on a record, and you're yeah, ready. I'll get on it. I bought this new uh, this new setup thing, so I can I can get on it today. <laughs> All set up. Yeah, professional. So yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun, and uh, have you gotten a lot of feedback or anybody any offspring fans coming at you like, oh, oh I saw you on Mikey and, and his you, it's amazing. Um, I've actually linked to some of the well, the ones I've been in, but also some of the other ones, and and the fans have loved them. Yeah, uh, I think the Holiday Road one was the one that really got people going. There was one other one that was kind of like that. It was uh, it wasn't a punk song. It was it was something you know from left field that the fans Earth really Angel, loved. Uh, the Back to the Future song with the guy who sang it in the movie. Yeah, That's it might have been that one yeah. of all time. Back to the Future. So he did that, and then the guy who was in the movie who sang it, um, co sang, sang it in the video. I saw that. That's rad. That's the rad. Uh, Bitsburg video got a lot of hits. I think. You yeah. Liked. That's a great, what a great song too. You know, it was one, wasn't one of the, the Ramon songs I was most familiar with, but uh, I've had it stuck in my head ever since we did that one. So. Yeah, it was, you could have worse songs stuck in your head. Hey, uh, Noodles, before I let you go, I want to ask you really quick, what, uh, what's the one activity or one thing you do in your life over the last year or several years, something like maybe even a guilty pleasure of sorts that maybe Austrian fans or punk rock fans would be like, what? He does, <laughs> yeah. what? I actually started getting into bird watching i'm not i'm not super pro at it or anything you know it's very amateur um but i love checking out the birds there's a uh, you know a couple one. places How's that we'll yeah that's them. a good one yeah yeah that's a, that's a <laughs> good one <laughs> yeah bird bird flipping yeah it's, it's good bird watching. But, you, know, you got binoculars and you got a book i i do i do i don't have the book handy but yeah i've got i've got all that yeah i don't that's have the cool. i have them out out there actually but yeah, um, I binoculars. I have a, a big scope too, um, which is too heavy to carry. Like you know, but I, for when I'm looking out the window, I, I have it here. Are there spots in SoCal or Huntington or OC that you, you know what? Yeah, there's a bunch of places actually. In in like Huntington Central Park is a great spot to to go see things. 
Um, you know, and in, even in the city, there's all kinds of like hawks and stuff. We have some wetlands nearby that have a lot of cool birds. Um, you know, we, we have some open fields, and that's a great place to see like red tail hawks and and some of the smaller hawks. There's Cooper hawks and Merlins and things like that, and kestrels, which are you know smaller birds of prey. You know, pretty cool looking birds. White tailed kites, gorgeous, gorgeous bird. Do you have a like a list of top? three birds you, you got in your bucket list of birds that you want to see one day? No, yeah. I, I don't, you know what I got to do is I got to go back and watch the big year, which is with Jack Black and Owen Wilson, I think Steve Martin. And uh, they, they, they're traveling around the world and trying to beat each other and, and see the most, the most birds. It's all, you know, uh, you know, you take, you take your, it's on your word. You just take your, you know, you take people at their word for it, whether they've seen it or not. And a lot of birds you don't see if you hear the bird, that counts as a it's like oh, really? a bird experience. Yeah. Well, aren't some so, calls similar to others? Like you could be thrown off a little bit. Uh, sure, but some birds look similar to others too. You, you know, so yeah. Um, but yeah, if you know what you're doing, you can usually tell. And a lot of times, if it's two birds that look alike, the only way you can tell is because their their trill will be a little different. Mm-hmm. I don't know that that much about it, but I just know that, that people do study that. And actually, you can find like on bird websites you can get the bird call you can get the recordings of them and stuff and then hear them the only the only bird i've ever had that experience with is a bird called a whip bird in australia and it sounds like somebody's cracking a whip it's exactly wow. what it sounds like i could not see the bird for the life of me it was in the bushes somewhere but it was loud and it was like this loud whip cracking sound that's the only bird i've ever I've ever awesome. identified by its sound and never never actually laid eyes on what do we call that bird? Let's call it a whip bird. Done and done. It, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, totally. I was, I was just in Mexico in Cozumel for a friend's wedding gathering. And uh, the resort was right next to the jungle. So all the, oh, yeah. all the, all the restaurants were literally on the jungle. All the, all the little cabanas were right next to the jungle. Uh, I saw a lot of cool birds. I would have no idea what they were called. I saw red ones and yellow ones and yeah. green ones and purple ones and big ones and I, small ones. It was beautiful. You would have loved it. I would have totally loved it. And I would have got online like later and go, oh, that. So like tried to figure out what that, what that is. I do, you know, I just get this nerdy kind of kick out of knowing what they are. And yeah, I don't, I don't know why. Um, well, before I let you go, uh, Noodles, I mean, you talked about your nickname being Noodles. Do you still, do you still Noodle? Do you still pick up your guitar? And, and I do, yeah. What's yeah. the last thing you learned? Yeah. Oh, the last thing I learned, um, I'm trying to learn Rain and Blood, um, which... I get too excited. <laughs> yeah, Jeff had him, and he was so a real master. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, it's just a funny. It's a funny song, "Raining Raining Blood," and uh, it's just it's fun to play. It's so fast. I actually have to to work up, and then eventually, and I'm still can't play it. Yeah, all the right hand. It's all the the left hand isn't that difficult. You know, well, the one part that. What is that like the third, second or third, you know, for I guess it's a third phrasing in it. Right before it goes into the thrash. Yeah, yeah, right before the singing comes in. And it's like, what the hell is he doing there? And that's that's a hard on the, the left hand. Otherwise, it's the right hand. The right hand is so, so fast. Who's the guitar uh, player in punk rock that you watch when you play a, a festival or go on a tour and you see this guy or this girl play and you think, fuck, okay, I got to sit down and do some noodling? Yeah. Oh, there's, there's all kinds. I mean, from Stan, you know, I, I love learning all the old Dickies stuff To We just played with X, well, not just, probably been about two years. We played with X and every time I watch Billy Zoom, because his style is so different. So rockabilly, you know, almost country uh, and jazz, like country jazz kind of stuff. And I would never think to play stuff like that, but I love it. And I love the way, I love the way his playing sounds. So Every time I see them play, I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to go back and woodshed on that a little bit and learn how to play some of that stuff. I know Scott plays bass in Face to Face Shiplet, but have you watched him play guitar his videos? He's phenomenal. Yeah, he's yeah. just phenomenal. Yeah. We actually had Scott uh, come out and fill in uh, when, when Greg's wife was having a baby. He filled in for like a week with us in Europe. And uh, just a great guy, great guy to hang and Just so fun. He's such a good performer. Yeah, that's one of the great things. Before I let you go about the genre that we live in, the punk rock, pop genre, the rock, rock, punk, pop genre, whatever you want to call it, 
everybody, right. for the most part, 99% of, of personalities in the bands are the coolest, most down to earth people you'll ever meet in your life. And they, and when, once you're friends with them, you're friends for life. And yeah, so, surely falls in that category as does. Yeah. People, yeah, definitely. And you guys too. I mean, you guys have had a wild, unimaginable success, but it doesn't seem like it when you, when you meet, when you meet you guys, like on the cruise, we did the Flogging Molly cruise and everyone was approachable and friendly and people were having drinks with Dexter and you and talking about music. And that was so fun. That was, Dexter, yeah. Was, a lot of science guys were coming up to him and asking him about science, science questions, which, which makes sense. <laughs> but, uh, well, what other genre do you have like science guys in? You know, like, you know, I can't imagine, you know, like anybody from the, the Motley Crew era, <laughs> you know, Guns N' Roses era, Poison, like, Hey, let's talk about molecular biology. You know, let's talk about you know, like science guys. I, I don't now. Maybe I'm selling them short, but I don't know. No, I think I you're probably right. So on. I mean, we yeah, got punk rock. You got Dexter and Milo and um, and and other cats that are into science as well. But yeah, back in the Motley Crue, Poison, Warrant, you know, the days. I would imagine all those guys weren't uh, as learned learned. I, I don't think they they did guys. the schooling. And I shouldn't talk. I'm a retired janitor. You know, I don't, I don't have the education that any, you know, Dexter or Milo or Greg, you know, have. I don't have any of that. So, yeah. And one, one last question. You have probably been on many a planes with Dexter as, as, with him flying. Is he a smooth pilot? Easy going? You know what? He's a really good, conscientious pilot. I get kind of claustrophobic in the small plane. Um, and the small plane, you know, swings a little bit more. So it's a little bit more nerve wracking, I think, than a big, um, you know, commercial jet. But I, he's safe. He knows what he's doing. He, he's, he's always studying and always taking classes and flying and, and doing different, uh, uh, different courses and stuff. He's got every rating you could get, um, except for like, you know, specific plane ratings. But he's got a bunch of those, too. Um, so he's he's a you know genius pilot. I feel safer than when he's flying the plane than I do some of the pilots we've hired to go out on tour with oh, us. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, he's he's that good. He's really good. But it, but it, sometimes I get a little nervous on the small plane. And you know, Scott Scott was flying with us, and we went through. It was probably one of the most like ten most horrifying minutes I've ever spent in his jet. We flew through a hailstorm, and Scott Shiplett was on that flight with us. We're leaving, we flew commercially to Munich, picked up the jet. And we took off and tried to beat the storm, and it was rough. I mean, yeah, we hit a, we hit some turbulence. The the table came flying out, and yeah, it was it was like a terrifying ten minutes. Then we busted through, and it was like one of the most beautiful, peaceful comp flights after that. Knowing it was behind you, trying to catch up. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, the time we landed in Russia, and the guys of the of the uh, machine guns came on the plane to keep warm. No, no, no the world. I told you that, right? You flew. Flew around the world and he oh, Dexter, yeah, yeah. Russia between like I guess Russia and Alaska was the sketchiest portion because he had to land in Russia to refuel and it was winter storm and he the guys with the uh, you know the AK forty sevens got go quick come in it's cold and he's like of course uh, yeah come in and stay warm so he shut the door and he ended up there like blah, blah, blah. but they're holding machine guns and he's like oh so he, what's going on guys <laughs> how funny you know I knew he was I, remember, <laughs> I don't remember that part of the story I remember he was he was sketching on the fuel because the, there was a language barrier. And he couldn't really understand. He wanted to make sure they were putting in the right fuel, you know, not just regular aviation fuel, but, but actual jet fuel, you know. And, and uh, it was, apparently, because he made it. But, yeah. <laughs> you know? it's like going from Russia to Alaska, is like there's no lights anywhere, literally nothing. And you're like, yeah, okay, goes wrong. I might be, this is it. But he made it and lived to tell the story. But uh, uh, interesting yeah. thought of being a band with him. Uh, I'm excited for the record to come out. Let the bad times roll. Out everywhere, April 16th on Concord Records or wherever you purchase digital music. I'm looking forward to you guys playing some shows when you get back from Europe in the spring and our summer. Me and fall. too, man. And we can start getting into some of these U.S. festivals and uh, we can connect again face to face. I look forward to it. All right, Noodles. Thanks for coming on, brother. I appreciate it. My pleasure, Darren. Always good to talk with you. I'll right, we'll talk soon, bud. Thanks. Yep. You got to keep them separated. 